What's up, guys? Today is day number one. This is the beginning of the end, the beginning of the rest, if you will. I'm super excited about today. Here's my hat. Boom, right there. Uh, McGrew's Brew, McGrew Ranch. We are multiple things, but this is it. This is the first video. Right now, there's just a couple of people following us, but I want you to get the word out. What we are going to do is going to change the world. I want you to be part of this. I want I want everyone to know about what we're doing. I want you to know our mission. I want you to know what's going on. I want you to know why we're different than every other coffee roaster out there. All right? So, Today, you're about to find out what our mission is. You're about to get this big picture. And I, like I said, I just want you to know, like this video, subscribe to us, share us, get the word out because what you do matters. What you do, the decisions that you make every single day matter. Even the small ones like what cup of coffee you buy, what brand of coffee you buy. And so today, you're about to find out what the difference is. Are you ready? Here we go. I've been roasting coffee now for like seven years. I love roasting coffee. I enjoy it. It's fun. It, uh, it started out as just a hobby, something that, you know, I like to drink coffee. What if I did this? What if I roasted coffee? What if I tried doing this? And so that's how it started. I've roasted, man, so many different origins of coffee. I, I've tried Ethiopian, Brazilian, Mexican, Colombian, Sumatra. I've tried it from all around the world, literally. And man, there are some good coffee out there. It, the, the different origins, the notes, the flavors that they've got, it is good stuff. But there's something I learned a couple years ago that I want to share with you that changed my life, truly. It changed the way that I am looking at things. It, it changed my my future going forward even to to me having this this gut desire I've got to do this this is a calling guys this is something bigger than just a position a, a job a, a, just another bag of coffee you see a couple of years ago I was pastoring a church it's Trinity Baptist Church in Roy City I love Trinity I miss the people there and so if you're watching this and you're from Trinity guys I love you and uh, I'm hoping to see you soon even. And so I, I want y'all to know that while I was pastoring at Trinity, I was at a pastor's conference and there was a speaker there who started talking about what was going on in Africa. And at that time, he was down in South Africa, down in the, the southern regions of Africa and he actually was going specifically to one of the locations of the origins of coffee that I was currently roasting. And whenever he got there, he started looking around and he realized what was going on in that area. You see, the coffee farmers, the coffee processors, the people that go in and actually buy the green coffee beans from farmers, they're going in and they're paying farmers such a small amount of money that they are actually having to sell their kids. Like they're selling their kids. Or their kids are having to just leave because of malnutrition. I want you to I want you to stop and realize that literally right now there are children, there are farmers, there are families that are in extreme pain. You see, they're selling their kids into sex trafficking, into drug trafficking. Like I said, they've got insane malnutrition because these coffee processors are going over there. And these coffee farmers are only getting paid literally cents on the pound for coffee. Not only that, but whenever these coffee processors these coffee processors go in. They don't even hire the farmers to do any of the processing work themselves. They'll, they'll go in and they will clean out their fields. They will tell them exactly what they're going to pay them, whether if they like it or not. And so they're just left. They have no choice. They only have this one person that they can sell to because drug cartels and sex trafficking are so prominent in these areas that it's not like they can sell to anybody else. They can't make another deal. 
And so right now in this world, there are children, there are little girls, little boys that are being raped over and over right now. And I realized that, like I said, it was an origin of coffee that I had on hand that I was roasting in that moment whenever I found that out. I didn't mean to do anything bad. I wasn't intending for what I was doing on, you know, just any given morning. I wasn't intending for that cup of coffee to be fueling sex trafficking and drug trafficking around the world, but it is. And the reason why is because of supply and demand. Whenever people get in and they say, look, I just want to buy the cheapest bag of coffee that I can because I love coffee and I want coffee or whatnot, like what you are doing to the rest of the world is devastational. I knew at that moment I had to do something different. I knew at that moment that I had, as a pastor, as a man of God, as somebody who says that I believe that Jesus died to save us, that as if I believe that he would leave his place in hell, like if I, if I believe that he would sacrifice like that for me, I've got to sacrifice for these kids. I've got to sacrifice for these families. They are hurting. And so I chose to make a difference. I, ch I chose to make a change. And I started researching and I decided, okay, look, I'm going to be part of the change. I'm going to be part of the, the, I'm going to be part of this whirlwind that's going to change the entire world. Even if it's through something small, like what cup of coffee I have in the morning. And so God put Haiti on my heart. I decided I was going to do something in Haiti. I am going to go to Haiti and I'm going to make a difference in Haiti. And I didn't know how, I didn't know what I was going to do, but Haiti. And so I started researching Haiti because Haiti was one of my favorite beings. And whenever I started researching Haiti and I got in, what I found was insane. It was a miracle. I found a company named Singing Rooster. It's a company that I team up with directly. And yeah, you can even actually buy coffee directly from them. Um, but I found this company, Singing Rooster, and they operate a 501c3 nonprofit organization in Haiti directly with the farmers, where the farmers are actually making a minimum of like three bucks per pound. In Haiti, I don't know if you know this, they're actually one of the most impoverished, if not the most impoverished country in the world. But the amount of money that they live off of could be eight bucks a month. Literally, uh, the, the amount of poverty in Haiti is insane. And so whenever I found out that this company was doing it, I knew it's like, this is no accident. God didn't put Haiti on my heart for just some random reason. God wants me to team up with these people. So I've teamed up directly with Singing Rooster. It's the only company that I buy coffee from anymore because of what they're doing, because of the way that they are working directly with farmers. They're not going in and overrunning farmers they're not contributing to sex trafficking and drug trafficking like almost every other coffee origin that I've ever bought did. You know, you got to think about it. Why is Colombia such a popular drug place and coffee place? Brazil, Ethiopia. I mean, come on, like you see the videos of these people. Guys, those two things are connected. It's not just by chance. They are connected. Mexican drug cartels, I want you to stop and realize, I want you to stop and think, all right? It's not just about the cheapest bag of coffee you can grab. This is about actually looking at the, the, the choices that we make on a daily basis. They are going to change the world. And it's either going to be for the good or the bad. I, you got to think about the, the simple laws of fix, physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And so... I decided I was going to change the world and now I've got my coffee business where I'm roasting Haitian coffee, fresh roasted coffee. I, I, I don't even roast it until you buy it. And then I roast it and I get it delivered to you. I want to take care of you. I want you to know that this is going to be some of the best coffee you've ever had. 
but not only is it going to be some of the best coffee, some of the best tasting coffee, this is actually going to be like something that's changing the world. Something that is helping stop, something that's helping end sex trafficking, something that is helping end drug trafficking, something that is helping end malnutrition and poverty, extreme poverty in the world. You can do that just simply by making sure that what you do, the choices that you make, even the things you you think may be small, make a difference. You see, it's actually our hope, our mission that we're going to help change Haiti. As a company and as a pastor, as a man of God, it is my goal to get into Haiti and start taking the gospel to them and and have it funded through this business. It is my goal to get in there. So I, I, that means I've got to learn French or, or Haitian Creole. That means I've got to learn this stuff and I am going to vow to do this with you. But I need your help. I need you to, to, to change who you're drinking coffee from. I need you to realize the choices that you make matter. I need, even if it's from, man, even if you buy singing Rooster coffee, man, like change the world. All right. It doesn't even have to be me. It doesn't have to be mine, but I want it to be. You see, I've got these dreams. I've got these visions that I want you to be part of. I don't want to just take this to Haiti, guys. I, it is my big vision. It is my big dream that I feel like God is leading me into that one day we are even doing the same thing in other countries, taking him to other places, taking him to where the drug cartel and sex trafficking is literally the worst in the world. And it is my heart's desire that we do that. It is my heart's desire that we can one day open a coffee shop and not just be a roasting business. And that coffee shop is planting churches throughout this area, right outside. Look, we're, we're right outside of Dallas-Fort Worth. We're northeast. We're in Point, Texas. It's a small community. It's a lot of farming. But even here, there's so much brokenness. There's so many drugs. There's so much poverty, even in this area. And so we want to make a difference. We want to make a change. We want this world to literally be different. We want to go and make disciples of all nations. Guys, I want you to join me. Not just by buying coffee. I I want you to join me in my mission. Pray for me. Pray for our company. Buy our coffee. Share the word. Get the word out. But not just ours. Guys, look at everything that you do. Are you looking to just spend the cheapest amount of money that you can just so that you can have your cup of coffee in the morning? You know, are you looking for something that's just convenient for you? Or are you looking for something that's actually going to make a difference? Because simple, tiny little changes like that, they can literally change the world. Guys, I want you to stay tuned. Like I said, like this, subscribe to it, share this video. But most of all, just make a change. Be a change. All right? Guys, I love you. You're going to be my best friend. As we go forward, as McGrew's Brew really gets up and running, as we launch, as we start ranching more, as we start trying to feed the community, trying to love the homeless, trying to just love these people for the gospel of Jesus and taking them the message of the gospel of Jesus. Guys, I want you to be part of this. I hope that you have a blessed day. I hope that you have an awesome day. Come back and see me. Once again, like, subscribe, share, get the word out, buy a bag of coffee. I promise you, you're going to love it. Peace out, guys.